Hi, this is Casey Swanson with TIA. We're talking today about the outlook for NAFTA and how an update could affect the U.S. technology uh, industry. I have with me today uh, Barry Jackson, who is Chief of Staff to former House Speaker John Boehner and is now at Brownstein Hyatt and Jen Sanford from Cisco. Thank you for joining us. Thanks, Casey. Thanks for having us. Um, so may maybe I can start off with you, Jen. I'd love you to set the scene a little bit and tell us um, what, how do you think NAFTA has worked for the uh, IT industry at this point? Um, and with that as a backdrop, um, what is your big picture view of a NAFTA modernization? Well, I think first and foremost, um, the term you use is the right one, that we modernize NAFTA. We don't renegotiate the entire agreement, but we keep what works and we add in elements that will he help to set a high standard for a trade agreement of the 21st century. Well, I'd love to talk to you a little bit more about um, the tech industry's priorities on NAFTA. But Barry, I wonder if you could talk a little bit first about, uh, give us a perspective from the Hill and how uh, NAFTA, a NAFTA update is viewed at this point. Yeah, so Casey, once you, once you take out the normal partisan rhetoric, you're a free trader, you're a protectionist, you're a tree hugger, you want to despoil the environment, get rid of all of that. The Hill understands how important NAFTA has been to our economy and how integrated the three countries are. So you'll hear a lot of that rhetoric, but everybody understands it can be updated, it can be modernized. And there's not a state in the country that doesn't have an impact by this. And so I expect at the end of the day that uh, it'll pass. And, and, and the members want to see it done. And one of the things that, that makes them want to see it done, I think, is that um, under the new TPA that was passed um, last Congress, um, this is the first time the Congress really gets to assert itself in a negotiation. And so I think you've got a lot of members on both the Republican side and the Democrat side, and the House and the Senate, that are very eager to play a role in this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jen, I wonder um, if you could talk a little bit more about the um, elements of the uh, agreement that are most important to the technology industry at this point. Well, for the tech sector, and I think a, a, a number of our issues are spelled out in the Trade Promotion Authority legislation, um, we'd like to see uh, issues that are existing within the agreement to stay within the agreement, such as um, open and non-discriminatory government procurement, um, obviously zero tariffs. Mm -hmm. and in fact, we'd like to have Mexico join the information technology agreement as part of a NAFTA uh, modernization. And there were a number of elements uh, on digital trade that were included in the TPA legislation that we would like to see incorporated into NAFTA, such as um, preventing governments from requiring localization of storage and of data, storage and, da and processing of data, as well as um, preventing governments from requiring source code as a condition of market access, and uh, allowing for the free flow of trade in products with encryption. Mm -hmm. so those are just a few examples of where we'd like what the priorities are for the sector. Okay, and it does seem like there's a fair amount of support on the Hill for some of those digital trade, uh, digital trade rules for modernizing the agreement and that, from that standpoint. I wonder, um, Barry, if you could just walk us a little bit through, uh, there's a very crowded legislative agenda at this point, kind of where NAFTA fits in the priorities list. Well, uh, Casey, as you know, in Washington, the timelines exist until they don't exist. <laughs> But in this one, I think there's some things that, that make, will end up making this a must do versus a want to do. So if you assume next week um, the USTR puts out its statement of here's our priorities, and that by mid-August negotiations are up and running, um, what you're going to find is that outside influences, particularly the Mexican election and how that impacts. And as we know, members of Congress are always concerned about their own midterm elections. So the idea of trying to get this done before either Mexican politics intervenes or U.S. politics intervenes is really critical and it's really important. At the end of the day, if the White House is paying attention to the members, if they keep the negotiations focused, not on rewriting the whole agreement, but looking at the places that you can improve for all three markets, um, I think it becomes easier to pass. And so it's possible that you could get it done by the end of the year or at the latest, probably in the February, March timeframe, I think. Mm -hmm. Great. And just a final point about the IT sector, which employs 4 million Americans and pays 
about two, two times the median annual wage. Um, we think that NAFTA can help to grow that base of jobs and help to make those Americans more competitive in the global economy. So NAFTA is really, a, a really important on the, on the jobs front in terms of preserving and expanding that base of jobs. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for joining us here today. We appreciate it. Thanks, Casey. Thanks, Casey.